Hello everyone at TechSmith. After a lot of making a lot of mistakes, I should say, um, trying this and trying that, I finally figured out how to successfully uh, create an RSS feed that will display a full screen image. And I was going to walk through how I did that process because after a uh, talk with your tech support yesterday, we couldn't get on the same page whereas he could create the same scenarios as I could. So let me get started with this. I'm going to walk through the whole process. And so here we go. I'm trying to display, like I said, a screen, I mean a picture within a zone that's in an RSS feed as opposed to a web picture by itself. So let me go over to Carousel and we're going to look at the version information and stuff just to start it off. I'm going to log in. Okay. Wow. That's the right one. That's not the right version. That's Tightrope Media Systems. Okay, Tightrope is version 5.5.0 right here. Build 226. If I go back to the main menu and go into Carousel, and let's look at that one. Carousel is version 6.4.5 Build 11. And the database version is 6.2.0. All right, with that out of the way, let me show you a quick look at the source. Here's what I'm trying to display. This image, the URL is up here. It's also embedded within the uh, RSS feed. I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, the dimensions of this are 896 by 606 pixels. And that just happens to be the exact size of the zone that it's going to be displayed in. All right. You might hear some noise in the background. There's a few people going to be walking through my office and they might be talking. So bear with me. All right. Let's go back to the Dreamweaver view here. This is the source that I have successfully gotten to work. And it's just a, a basic RSS feed. It's got a uh, channel. I put in a uh, title, a link, and a pub date, and a description. And within that, I have this image. And an image element in RSS 2.0 consists of three child elements, a URL, a title, and a link. And right here is the same URL to that image. So the idea is to display this image. Okay. It also has an item. It's a kind of a dummy item in that it has no, it has a title tag, but there's no content. And likewise with the description. And it has a pub date. Now the reason it has these three items is because apparently Carousel requires them and it also requires at least one item. Okay, so if you were to remove the item and just go with the channel, um, the image will not display. No matter what you do in Carousel, it's not going to display. So you need the one item as kind of a dummy item. All right, now let's take a look at the real RSS specification which I'll pull up over here. Let's see, it's in, where is it? I think I got it in Firefox. Yeah, okay, here we go. Now the RSS specification uh, 2.0 version, I'm looking at the element, I mean the item element, and it really doesn't tell you whether or not they're Mandatory or optional. You have a title and a description. Um, 
An item element does not allow for an image element to be within it. However, the uh, we come up to the channel channel elements. Let me just search for image. Find image. Okay, optional channel, channel elements. As we can see, an image is in here. All right, and that's being implemented correctly in Carousel. It's not a problem. So you can have an image tag, but it has to be at the channel level. All right, now let's look at the XML schema for an RSS 2.0 feed. This is a schema specification. It was made in 2008 and hasn't been up updated since. Um, I've tracked down here the element called item. It says minimum occurs one time. So that means that it's mandatory. In fact, if I search for minimum occurrences here and say highlight them all, there's only one that occurs in the entire schema. Oops, apparently I searched for the wrong thing here. No, I didn't. All right, there's only one thing that's truly mandatory, and that's an item, and you have to have at least one. And the maximum number of occurrences is unbounded, meaning uh, unlimited, I guess. Okay, now everything else all other elements, according to the schema, if we highlight all the ones that, that allow zero occurrences, that means that it's optional. We'll see that everything in the entire schema, other than that item element, is optional. Okay, that having been said, if we go back to the Dreamweaver, I, I don't really think this is that important, but you shouldn't have to specify the title, link, pub date, and description. But Carousel is requiring it, so that's okay. It's okay. It just kind of deviates from the fact that everything is optional except for the item tag itself. You should just be able to have a start and an end item tag, but that doesn't work. So anyway, that, that covers the preliminary stuff here. Um, let me see what else is on my list. Oh, yeah. We want to view this feed in Firefox. Let's take a look at the feed itself. As you can see, Firefox is returning the title and the description. And here's the picture over here on the right side. Okay. Um, the same thing won't appear in Chrome. Chrome is... Uh, it's just going to show the source code, the same thing that we saw in uh, in Dreamweaver. Okay, now that uh, it's been established that that both the XM, XML feed and the image itself are on my web server, with the URLs pointing to them. Okay, um, let me just refresh this page, and I want to go in. I want to log into Carousel in Firefox as well. Just for the heck of it. Oops. Front door login. Okay. Um, in both of these, well, let me just show you in Firefox. I don't have to show you in both. If I go to the active bulletins, I set up this one right here already, and I'm going to recreate this manually as, a, as another uh, feed item, but it's going to look just like this when it's done. And believe it or not, that's an RSS feed. Now, if we look at the source to it, um, over here, in the blocks, there's only one block, and that's a picture. Okay, I have deleted all the other blocks. Now let's go through 
go back to the main menu and let's walk through creating this bulletin from scratch so to do so um, let me find it's here somewhere this guy right here this is my source I'm gonna leave these th this uh, on my website so if you want to uh, pause the video and just jot down this I'll include it in a link in, in the uh, on the ticket as well but you can always access this XML for your own testing with the newer versions that uh, apparently have a problem with this whole functionality because like I said the tech support conversation resulted in he couldn't duplicate um, embedding an image and having to actually show up on the screen because the version of carousel he had was slightly newer than the one that I'm using so hopefully this will be helpful to you okay now that I've copied that clipboard let's come back and create a new bulletin dynamic bulletin RSS bulletin and I'm just going to put the URL in here and continue um, next I'm going to copy this to the clipboard the channel you are or image image URL I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and then we're going to edit this feed now you could leave these tags in here and just add a web picture block as long as the web picture block doesn't fill the whole screen in other words, it has to be able to fit within these other items that surround it. Um, if you do try to fill it over the top of them, you'll receive an error. And the error message that you receive will be no blocks could fit in the current template because you're trying to put the web picture block on top of all the other existing blocks. And I guess it doesn't like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and delete all these blocks. Before I put the picture block in so we're just going to delete them all all right they're, they're all deleted now we're going to add a new block and I'm just going to name it web picture and select its type as being web picture alrighty then I'm going to open up the picture and I'm going to paste in the hatch channel image URL hatch in there oops that closed up so that's that's that and you want to maintain the aspect ratio now the screen dimensions I believe they were 896 by 606 yeah those just happen to be 16 by 9. I believe they are. Maybe I could be wrong. No, I think I am wrong. At any rate, I'm just going to resize this to cover the whole screen. And then say save and exit. Continue. Finish. And OK. All right, let's go back to the main menu. Now, this takes a while to render. I've tried to uh, figure out what is taking so long. And the best of my determination is I have like 40-something uh, slides in rotation or bulletins that rotate in the cycle. And it seems to take between two and three rotations of all 40-something before it will actually render this. So it's kind of slow to render, but it'll eventually render. Wow, that happened real quick there. So it's, record, it's rendered in a record uh, amount of time here, which is good. It makes the video shorter. So I'm just going to refresh and go back in. We should now see that that one looks the same as this one. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So th there you have it. That's successful. 
Now one may ask, why did I want to do this? Why didn't I just use a picture, a web picture block and be done with it? Well, the reason is, is because I want it to be fully dynamic. And by fully dynamic, I, I mean I have a an external application that can take this on and off the air whenever I want to. And the way I do that, I have another RSS feed up here. Um, let's take a quick look at that. And I have the URL to that, which I will also include. This is not really relevant to the video, but I just wanted to explain why I'm going through these changes. Okay. Um, and in here, just wanted to show you that I have no blocks or nothing. It's absolutely blank. All it has is a background of blue. Now, let me come back to manage bulletins, active bulletins. And let's preview the sky. You'll see that it never does render. It never will, and that's okay. But you'll notice that the, the little light bulb here is gray as opposed to being green or red. So gray means that it's off the air. All right. If we go into this, I'm going to open this link up at a new tab. Um, well, I should have done that in Chrome instead. Let me do it in Chrome. Okay. We'll see all that it is is an RSS tag with an empty channel tag between it. This is how you create a dummy to take something off the air. So an external application can simply just swap the files with each other to take it on and off the air, the real file or this dummy file. Anyway, that's that. I hope this video is helpful in trying to uh, solve whatever problem is happening with the new versions because sooner or later I'm going to have to update and I don't want it to break everything I got going on over here. So until next time we'll talk, my name's Larry Robertson. Thanks, thank everyone at TechSmith for all the help you've given so far and any help in the future. Hello, I'm back. I just want to make a little addendum uh, or correction to the last statement I meant about taking three cycles to render. Um, that was an awfully quick render for the initial image to come in. Um, sometimes it takes up to one cycle for that. And what does take two to three cycles is whenever you swap out to a different image within the RSS feed. And let me just explain what I mean by that. If I go back to Dreamweaver, um, we can see that we're pointing to CR1 JPEG. And over here in the right column here, this is out of my server. That's this file that we currently selected. And if I go to here, that's this file. All right, CR01.jpg. If I wanted to switch the RSS feed to point to CR02, for example, but keeping the same RSS feed and the same bulletin inside carousel without changing any of that, all I would have to do is simply change this to CR02, save it, and put it out on the site. Let's see. Okay, so I just saved that change out to the site. Now if I go back to carousel, come down and we try to render this guy. It's still going to show the old one. And like I said, it takes two to three cycles of going through all 40 slides before this will actually refresh within carousel. So let me just click this a couple of times, make sure it's not going to prove me a liar. 
and the time is now 1.13 and I'm going to pause the video and pick it up when this is done and I'll let you know how long that took in minutes. Alrighty. Alright, I'm back and I'm surprised again. It, it appears to be very inconsistent the amount of time. This time it took nine minutes to refresh that slide. I can bring it up here. Now it's Facebook. We can still the, the, we have a refresh problem on the thumbnail here. But it should have replaced both yeah, replaced both of them because they're both pointing to the same feed. So that worked great. Um, if I refresh the page here and come back in to manage bulletins, we should see that it now says Facebook. Yes it does. Alright, so that works great. Um, nine minutes is perfectly acceptable. So this whole scheme is going to work when I implement the final uh, application. I'm very happy about it. The only thing I'm worried about, like I said prior, is what happens if I update to a newer version of Carousel. So I'll sign off with that. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Bye.